This is Next Gen 12 in London, where I'm talking to Dr. Peter Cochran, who's just given the opening keynote. Peter, you talked about the bigger picture. Tell us more. What I tried to do was open people's minds to more than television and faster access to the internet. But the implications for industry, home workers, and the planet if we don't do things in a new and different way. We can't continue with the industries of old and the old ways of working. So I highlighted where the next industrial revolution will come from, and broadly speaking, that is a juncture of nano, bio, infotech, and artificial intelligence. It's about materials, and it's about not wasting energy, new forms of fabrication, deployment, and about a, a world of smarts, the Internet of Things, which includes you and I, by the way. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like it was uh, space fiction becoming fact in, in some, of the, some of the examples that you gave in health and learning, uh, the, like a whole new industry revolution. It's on the way, and the reason I know it's on the way is I work a lot in Southeast Asia, who are now leading the world along with America. And the UK is really on the back foot. We're still trying to preserve a healthcare system that was okay in the previous century, but isn't going to work in this next one. And we're doing the same with education. Education isn't learning. It really isn't. And we have to look at the way we're going to change our ways to meet the demands of a modern world. And, and any ideas? How do you think we're going to do it? Well, a good example would be the half-life of information. Uh, your typical doctor goes to university school for seven years. The half-life of medical information is about three and a half. So by the time they finish their course, they're only three and a half years behind. Physicists, on the other hand, enjoy about 14 years' worth of uh, information or knowledge before it, it wears out. And overall, for mankind, the average is about four and a half years. Now, that means that your education isn't something that you do done and dusted, forget about it. It's something that you do all your life. And it's got to be on, on your demand, wherever you happen to be, when you need it. And the only way you can do that is with an online world that's fast. Yeah, now fast is the key. Do you think the technology of the networks can keep up with this insatiable demand we're finding? Optical fibre can do everything that we need into the foreseeable future. Copper is a dead duck, period. And people who are doing silly things like fibre to the cabinet are going to rue the day. It's going to cost them a fortune. I had a conversation with the CFO of a telco recently. He was very upset that his energy bill is going up and up and up. Well, what a surprise. They're ramping down the energy in the switch sites, but they're deploying cabinets all over the place at two kilowatts apiece. Well, <laughs> they're also tying a knot in the optical fibre in terms of the bandwidth. It makes uh, no sense at all. You must, you must be incredibly excited, though, as, as you go around the world with your background in telecoms to see the potential that we now have in, in our grasp almost. Just a week ago, I was in a conference of 600 people. We had put a gigabit into the room. We got lots of Wi-Fi around the room. A minister next to me got his iPad out, tapped the screen, and then jumped back in shock. There must be something wrong. And I had a look. I said, well, why do you think there's something wrong? He said, well, it normally takes three minutes to download my files. And this opened immediately. And he did a day's work in an hour. The lady to my right not only uploaded a movie, but she also uploaded all the latest updates to all her applications on her laptop, all in less than five minutes. And it's about time. It's about being capable wherever you are. Peter, it's been a fantastic uh, session this morning, and thanks for sharing some time with us at NextGen TV. My pleasure.